Welcome back. So let's talk about sedimentation that occurred out in the West as well. Now we're not going to go through any of that sequence discussion. Um, you know, you, you have a gist of how sediment is deposited. And I'm, uh, so what I'm going to do is just more so show you some examples now of rocks that developed from those sediments that are important rocks in the West, including in and around um, Arizona. So let's take a gander, shall we? Um, so the Cordilleran was being pushed up and subsequently, as it was and is, is being ground down as well. So weathering and erosion were taking place. That's depositing sediments kind of on both sides of the Cordilleran into the ocean, but also onto land. Um, during the Triassic, one of the uh, now important rocks from deposition that occurred in the Triassic was the Chin Li Formation. Um, it's widely exposed throughout the kind of Colorado Plateau, which is like the Four Corners regions. You have Colorado, Utah, um, Arizona, and New Mexico. Um, and it's probably most famous, this, this rock, uh, this deposition and now rock, is most famous for its petrified wood that we can find in the Chin Li Formation. Um, and probably the best example of that would be Petrified Forest National Park in Arizona. Um, if you've never had a chance to go to Petrified Forest National Park, um, it's, if, here's Arizona, here's Flagstaff, it's east of Flagstaff, a couple of hours on your way to kind of New Mexico. So it's kind of out there, but it's gorgeous. You get a little hot, so don't go now if it's summertime. Wait for the wintertime. It's cold, but much better. So um, at the uh, Petrified Forest National Park, uh, a bunch of ancient gymnosperms, especially conifers, so the, those first coniferous trees we talked about forming back in the Paleozoic, uh, as well as some plants called uh, cycads are uh, preserved here. Uh, but most notably, it's going to be the tree trunks of these extinct uh, conifers. Fossilization of the wood itself resulted from the, stick with me now, silicification of the plant tissue <clears throat> so there's during this time there's also uh, volcanic activity um, that had occurred in the area after deposition so the weathering of volcanic ash beds um, and mixing with water fluvial stream deposits and um, outwash deltas uh, provided the the silica needed for this sili silicification process. Some trees were preserved and, and petrified in place, but most were kind of transported during some sort of flood, um, and that's why there's so many exposed uh, petrified uh, uh, trees here in the park because the area serves as an area where you know due to a flood, a bunch of these trees got knocked down and got collected in this area during the Mesozoic sedimentation occurred over time it took uh, time for silicification the process of going from organic wood material to now uh, stone um, takes place it takes some time but yeah they they're in this park for a reason because you know when sediment was deposited you know we're talking back in the Mesozoic era some flood got everything in, in around the same area so it's so dense with petrified wood the way it kind of works, uh, as simple as I can put it, so you got a tree trunk, it's buried under sediment, um, silica-rich minerals mixing with water will um, replace individually, cell by cell, the the plant tissue, the, the tree material, cell by cell, as the cell, cell um, uh, 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 decays away, a little bit of that silica material kind of fills in the gap. Cell by cell, that's what occurs. So let's take a look at what the actual deposition of the Chinle Formation looks like. Um, and this is what you would see. It's very colorful. Uh, you can see the, the, the banding of the different layers of sediment that were deposited. Again, this occurred, the deposition occurred during the Mesozoic, and obviously it took time for lithification. But this is the, the Chinle Formation. It's very otherworldly. It's almost like being on the moon up there. There's like no trees. If you go to this park, it's absolutely fantastic. And just petrified wood, as far as you can see. Again, they look like, you know, chunks of, of tree, right? They look like trunks. But that's, there's no more, there's no more plant material. There's no more tree material. 
every individual cell as it decays away gets replaced with this silica that's making its way through through the sediment silica from these ash beds of volcanic activity that were also present and around these can be very colorful right you, but you can still see the the aspects of the bark you can still see the different tree rings and these are very very colorful there are warning if you go here not because I, I know by experience, but because I look out for the national parks. If you go here, kind of parked all over, like on like on the tops of the Chinle Formation, uh, all over you'll see um, uh, park rangers watching to make sure you don't take any of this stuff. Don't take any of this stuff. Buy a little piece in the gift shop. Be done with it. There's plenty of gift shops like on the outskirts of this that sell a bunch of this stuff as well. Go do that. Don't leave 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 the stuff here. It's illegal. It's a federal crime. It's a felony. Um, yeah. So in any case, so the Chinle Formation, just one of those depositional uh, environments from the Mesozoic. Um, as we kind of proceed into the early Jurassic, um, there's a particular sandstone that's kind of of interest, um, and that's the Navajo sandstone. It's a, a widespread formation uh, that was once a coastal sand dune e environment. And the reason we know it's a sand dune because it has large cross bedding. Large cross bedding is wind-blown sand dunes. That's on land. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, again, these uh, large-scale cross beds, some of which are 25 meters high, which is 80, 90 feet. So these huge sand dunes, moving sand dunes, huge moving sand dunes in this area of deposition during the early Jurassic that eventually lithified and turned to stone. Excuse me. Oh, so here's a, a few snaps, uh, snaps, snaps of the Navajo sandstone. These large scale cross beds. Uh, can you tell which direction if I'm looking at, let's say this section here, because we have, you can see what they indicate is multiple movements of um, sand dunes. Each of these different layers is different movements of sand dunes. Uh, weathering and erosion is occurring in between each of these at a smaller scale. Um, so for instance, do you know which direction this is moving? If this was a sand dune, which direction is it moving? It's moving this way. It's moving to the right. Fun fact. Um, so again, you can see the large-scale cross bedding. Um, very, uh, very famous uh, type of sandstone in and around the the southwest um, Utah as you get into some of the national parks there even in northern Arizona so again this Navajo sandstone locking in these uh, large cross bedded sedimentary features one of the more more fantastic looking I think of the Navajo sandstone uh, cross bedded features is this place called the wave and this is a picture of the wave it's it's in Arizona you can't just willy-nilly go here on a whim. You, they actually have a lottery. They only give, I, I, I forget how many, but they only give a few permits per day for people to hike out here to go to this location. Um, it's kind of way out there in northern uh, Arizona. It's a bit of a you know drive, obviously, but also a hike from where you park to get to here. Um, but you have to pay, just like the lottery, uh, the, the state lottery, you have to pay and you get... I think it's like five dollars or it used to be and you get you get three choices like i want to try to go on uh august 1st august 15th and september 3rd you know you pick any days that you want and then they pull a lottery of people who will win a pass to go here i've tried to play the lottery uh i think three times here uh so essentially nine different days i've never won so i've i've stopped playing the lottery i don't like to waste money even five dollars i'd love to go but yeah, we'll see. Um, and then the uh, the Sundance Sea, um, the upper part of the the Navajo sandstone contains smaller cross beds, big cross beds, sand dunes, smaller cross beds that might start to indicate shallow water environments. Um, but the upper part of the the Navajo sandstone with these smaller cross beds contain dinosaur fossils some great dinosaur fossils um not the best but but some um well actually i take that back it they they are they are the best coming out of the navajo sandstone other than 
as you go later in time past the Navajo sandstone. Sorry, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, so we had some marine conditions returning to the interior of North America during this time to create something called the, the Sundance Sea. We had uh, a transgression event. Again, they were kind of rare. They really didn't dominate the Mesozoic, but they did occur. So we have this Sundance Sea where we get, um, obviously, different sediment deposition occurring, um, different environments on Earth occurring, and... All of this, the reason I, I mention this is because as we're coming out of the, the Navajo uh, sandstone, we get into a rock unit called the Morrison Formation. A large part of the area formerly occupied by the Sundance Sea uh, was covered uh, in by the deposition of sediment as, you know, the sea was there. Um, one of the parts uh, in this deposition from the Sundance Sea is the, the now world-famous Morrison Formation. The Morrison Formation, not the Navajo Sandstone, the Morrison Formation contains the world's richest assembly of Jurassic dinosaur remains. There's the dinosaurs existed in the Triassic and the Cretaceous periods as well during the Mesozoic, but as far as the Jurassic is concerned, the Morrison Formation is the, the richest in that. <clears throat> so <clears throat> sediment deposited in this area from that former Sundance Sea area so this is why we find great dinosaur fossils in all the way from Canada, definitely into Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, and definitely Utah, Arizona, New Mexico. We find some Jurassic-aged um, dinosaurs. For instance, when um, if you've ever seen the movie Jurassic Park, the original one, where they're originally digging up that uh, velociraptor toe, I think they were up in Montana. There's some great fossil finding in Montana. Uh, so this whole formation is just dynamite in finding dinosaur fossils. And you can find di great dinosaur museums throughout any location, usually, uh, in the Morrison Formation. So we can kind of see this sedimentation kind of in the Jurassic, um, this deposition as the sea kind of retreated away. So here's another look at that Morrison Basin, again, covering Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, all the way up into Canada. Here's a uh, picture of that Morrison formation, and it's digging into this stuff that we find fossils. Um, I think the Morrison formation is protected, so you can't just willy-nilly just start to find an outcrop of it and start digging into it. I think it's like a national treasure. Um, so there's this other cool location called Dinosaur National Monument. Although most major museums have dinosaur fossils from the Morrison formation that were dug out, Dinosaur National Monument, kind of that borders Utah and Colorado, they actually just kept it all in place so you could see it all in place. Um, it's a really cool location. There's this giant wall that they have there that has just hundreds if not thousands of different bones from a number of different species that's just absolutely fantastic to look at. And it's kind of like the same idea as um, the Petrified Forest. Um, a lot of organisms died. For some reason, a flood kind of congregated them all in one location and left uh, their bodies to be fossilized. Um, so yeah, so just massive, you know, deposits just in this rock wall. So they thought, well, let's not just dig them all out. Let's keep them here so everyone can kind of see what's going on. Um, the the soil indicators in the Morrison Formation indicate a very dry um environment so it might have been so dry things were dying out a seasonal flood may have occurred washed all these bodies into one spot covered with sediment and from there they were fossilized so anyway just some cool some cool rocks in around the the southwest the um chinle formation so we see that in the petrified forest national park navajo sandstone we see in a lot of the national parks around utah and these giant uh cross bedding uh images and then the Morrison Formation containing some of the best Jurassic uh, fossils of dinosaurs known on Earth. So let's go ahead and pause here. And when we come back, we're going to talk about the Cretaceous Interior Seaway. More on that in just a minute. <laughs> 